Hello, this is Destiny. Guys, I am back. We decided, well, I decided, I say, cool, you know, it's been a pretty good day. The sun is still up a little, you know, it's getting ready to go down. You probably see a little cloudiness and shadiness in the background. But I said, you know, we can do one more stop. And we can just pull out one more video. So we decided to do part four. So you guys ready for it? Have you watched uh, part one, part two, and part three? Because part four is coming. This is my special spiritual awakening journey. This is my road trip. Guys, I'm not walking you down this path with me, but I'm driving you to the destination of my higher self. So let's get started. I am so excited, guys. This has been a really good teaching. It's been a really powerful story if I say myself because this is my true story this is my enlightenment <laughs> let's get started because I want to get this done I'll see you on the other side of this story okay my people I decided to come back and do part four of this video and the title you know what it is hear the story of an avatar ride with me through my spiritual awakening journey and we have had an awesome wonderful time if you all haven't destiny can say she has with sharing her life story to a greater and higher self so guys i did part one i did a part two i did part three and I'm back to do part four, and I think the conclusion will be part five, which I may get to tomorrow. I'm not quite sure. I'm not promising. It's whenever I know that the timing is said for me to step in there and do it. And that's when I'll do it, okay? So catch up with part one, part two, part three. Then you will be right up with me when I'm ready to start right now. But I was talking about people, the avatar. How do... You act as an avatar. That was in part three. And I told you I'm going to give you some questions to enlighten your mind. So these questions, questions can help you to see your avatar <laughs> impression, whether you notice it or not. But I'm going to do those questions tomorrow. So today, in this last part of this video, I'm going to talk about the own road to self. The Own Road to Self, and that is part four. So let's jump into it, my people, and I'm back. I have to get this done because the night is falling quickly, and hey, you know, it gets very tired on the road. Ugh, it gets dark, and you don't feel like driving, so this is going to be the last part of this video for tonight, and we'll pick up the last part, hopefully the conclusion, part five, on the next time when Destiny appears before you guys. So I hope you're listening, guys. I hope you enjoy my story, my journey. This is my testimony. This is my story. This is my real life, people. So let's get started. On the road to the self. So when one decides to take the higher consciousness road to the self, people, guess what? He or she soon realizes that they are alone on that road. All of a sudden, you look around. It's like nobody's there but you. Because all the people that you may have shared your stories and your, uh, your enlightenment or your awakening with and all these things, you tell, you're showing people your new higher self and things like, I got to get away from her. I lost all the people. I lost all my church family. I lost my family in a way. They pulled away from me. My kids hung with me though. But my family, my sisters, my siblings, and you know, all my nieces and nephews, they thought that, hey, I was too far, too deep, so. But anyway, I found myself on that road alone. I lost the love of my life on that road, my people. I gave, I was giving ultimatums. Either I continued to do what I was doing and believing in what they were believing and teaching what I was be teaching. You can't walk with us anymore. I got, I got the kickoff. <laughs> Get away, stay away from us. And I found myself on that road alone by myself. And that's, I was talking about the herb. The herb is the cattle, like I said, like the sheep that's on its way to the slaughter. Well, the herb is going in the opposite, the opposite direction that you are going. 
Because all these people, they don't believe in you. All these people think that you're crazy. All these people saying, you know, ain't nobody about to talk no stupid stuff like this. So they continue to travel in that path, still going down into their lower subconscious state of being. But listen, people, one must be prepared for that. If you're going to stand out and say, hey, here I am, send me like Jeremiah did in, in the book of Jeremiah. He said, here I am, send me. So I stood up and I said, here I am, send me. Even though I fought and struggled and I wrestled with it, you know, and all that, I gave in because I realized that. I, it, I realized that it was such a powerful, it was a powerful view of who I was becoming that I had never seen. I never felt the peace. I never felt the love. So I gave up the fighting and I submit myself and I went on all the way in. And one must be prepared for that to find comfort in being alone. So, but I always say, hey, even though I am alone, I am not lonely. And even though in the sense of the higher, greater power, He's never has left me, he never will, so I'm never alone. So to find comfort in being alone and not being understood by others is a very hard thing. But it's something you take a while, you'll get over it, and you're like, whoo. And you're just happy, just being content that, hey, I'm not losing this battle for where he has been fighting and warring to pull me to my greater higher self and to give me all this power and information and knowledge about myself to just go backwards. Hey, let him go. And you just learn to let go because they no longer serve you. My people, you know what? I cannot take any credit for my spiritual awakening. Because you know, I told you, I was dragged, I was kicking, I was screaming, I was grasping straws, hanging on to rails, pulling on bars, I was doing everything trying to hold on to what I was comfortable with. I was doing everything trying to hold on what, to what I was familiar with, my people. I was trying to hold on to what I knew, the familiarity that I was in, the people that I was around, the people I grew up with. I was trying to hold on. I was fighting. I didn't want to give it up even though they were, had given up on me. I was doing everything to stay in that place, trying to hold on to those families. Trying to hold on to those friends. But I can say no. At this point in my life, like I said, he, he had been tugging at me and nudging me ever since I was 16 years old in high school. I did not recognize it. I did not understand it because I was so deeply asleep and so deep into what everybody was teaching me. I did not even turn over to even open my eyes to see what was pinching me, nudging me. I slept, but no, not this time. The Creator was not going to let me get away with any more locking him out, ignoring him, going ignorantly in my own way of doing things. No, he was not giving up this time. And that's why I said he had to drag me into my spiritual awakening. My spiritual awakening. He really literally had to drag me. So I tell you this, I take no credit at all for that. But you know what, guys? I am so thankful now that he did it his way because I never found so much love. I never sound, found so much peace. I never found so much happiness. I never found the person that, that he's showing me who I am, that who I am being today. I never found that person. I never really had much respect for myself. I never saw myself as being valuable or being important or being beautiful or being anything that is powerful and wonderful as he said I was. I'm so glad he did it his way. And you know, this is uh, Eckhart Tolle. I talked to him and a lot of things about his teaching, his books. But he stated that you don't have to wait for the dark night of the soul to dismantle your false notions or your false self and your life story. You can consciously take that road, but it demands courage and it demands discernment and brutal honesty of yourself. The mind is a very tricky opponent and will deceive you at every step. As your awakening is the end of the mind and the ego control over you. That's what the awakening is. 
The awakening is the end of the mind and the ego control over you. But it can't be done by people. And, and you riding with me right now. You've been riding with me through three states. <laughs> this is the fourth one. Part one, part two, part three. This is part four. We're going to go through three states. So you already know now, hey, you know my story. You know a lot about me. You know how I got to where I am today. And it can't be done. I have done it. And I'm still doing it, my people. Every day I got to get up. I got to keep fighting for my greater, higher self. Because the ego still runs behind you, trying to pull you back to see how you let your guard down. To see how have you given back some of the power to it. But you can do it. You just got to go in all the way and just do it, my people. So listen, as far as inner transformation is concerned, there is nothing you can do about that at all. Because everything is already placed within you before you were created, before he brought you forth, before the foundation of the world, he already predestined your whole entire life. So you don't have much of a choice. The Bible said to be renewed by the renewing of your mind daily. Every day we have to do a transformation of our mind. We have to reprogram their way of thinking. We got to line our thoughts with the thoughts of the creator of the universe. Let this mind be in you, which is also in the creator of the universe. So as far as an inner transformation is concerned, there is nothing, people, that you can do about that. You cannot transform yourself. And if that's what you're out there trying to do, you need to, hey, put the brakes on, say, oh, this is not my job. You got to go back to the creator of the universe who created you in the beginning. And he may have to scoop you all down and break you all up, chip you all back up into little dirts and bits and grass and pieces and start the creation program all over again. It's a transformation and only the creator God can do that. You cannot transform yourself. And you certainly cannot transform your partner, your, your children, husband, spouse, your co-workers, your, you can, your siblings, or anybody else. You cannot transform anyone. You can only transform yourself. And you cannot transform yourself. I mean, you cannot transform yourself. Only he can do that. And you certainly cannot transform anything or anyone or anybody else. So all you can do, my people, is create a space for transformation to happen. You got to create a space for grace, his grace. And for his love to come in and enter into you. So I'm going to conclude this real soon because I'm making this short because I got to get off the road, my people. We've been riding all day. So... This is part four of this series. So, you know, guys, I'm going to conclude this. So, the choice rests for with each, each of us. Yeah, do I need to say that again? Destiny, I think you're getting tired. <laughs> okay, people, I hear you back there talking. So, the choice rests with each of us. No one can do all of this for you. No. You got to stop depending on people, I keep telling you. You start, stop going outside of yourself trying to find the solutions and stop trying to find the answers. Where is it? The kingdom of God is where it's in you. Your answers is where it's in you. The universe is where it's in you. Where is God? He is in you. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is in you. Everything you need has already been placed in you, baby, before the foundation of this earth. And I keep telling you that. One day you're going to get it and you're going to wake up. So the choice rests with each of you. No one can do this for you. All I or anyone else can offer you are signposts pointing you in the direction. But you and you alone must take that role, my people, yourself. That choice has to be yours. Choose you this day whom or what you will serve. Choose what path that you're going to go down. He said, I'd rather you choose life that you and your seed shall live. Or are you going to choose this path over here? But the Creator is not going to force you. He's not going to make you. If you're going to the place that against His will, He has to let go. As much as He loved you people, you were disobedient and you're not following the plans that He has purpose for your life. So, you and you alone, I'm telling you, must take the road. 
it does look good to read my story, people. And I know you have had a if you seen or watched all these videos so far. You've seen a whole lot of my story been told, all of my experiences. But it does a little good to read my story. And then you don't act upon it. And to not take that road yourself. Because I chose the road that's least traveled by. And he always says that many are called, but few are chosen. There's a path that leads straight to him. And he is calling us on that road, my people. So, you must take that road. And I'm telling you, otherwise, my people, if you don't take that road, then you are only hanging out at the signpost. Believing that you have already arrived at your destination, my people, you are lost. You are lost. You are in a place that you don't know where you are. You are totally, absolutely lost. That is not your destination, hanging out with your ego, hanging out with the world systems, hanging out with people, lies, and programs. That is not your destination. My people, the role is not for the timid. It is not for the faint of heart. No, it's not at all for any of those people. You got to be bold, courageous. But there is no other way or no other road, I'm trying to tell you people, no other road or no other way to get into your higher self than you got to go through the path and the plans and the way of the creator of the universe. No one can simply just wave a magic wand over you and say, ooh, zap you into your spiritual awakening. It's not going to happen that way, my people. We all have a path that we must tr travel through. It's a process. And he's getting us prepared and equipped. That's why we got to go through some things. We got to go through some trials. We got to go through some tests. We got to go through all those things. So he's testing us to see when we get to the deepest part of the ocean, the river. Are we going to run and back up and run? Are we going to be coward? Are we going to be faint hearted? You can't deal with any of those, my people. You got to be bold and courageous because he has put his bonus in you. You are a daredevil, my people. But I'm telling you again, there is no other road or way to get into your higher self. No one can simply, people, and be listening, they cannot wave a magic wand over you. It is a road of destruction. And the question is, how much are you willing to give up? How much can you endure? Because on this road, my people, the road to your higher, greater self, you must give up every single thing. You must give up every part of you. You must give up your thinking, your negative thoughts, your hanging out with negative people. You got to let go and detach yourself from your ego. Every piece of you, my people, has to shatter. You have to be broken down. Like the potter will put you back together again. So can you endure that, people? Can you endure that? Can you handle that? You must die to live, my people. And that's the only way. You must die to live. So how serious are you about finding your higher self? How serious are you about going deep all the way to your spiritual journey, to that place that he's calling you to your higher, greater version of who he created you to be? How much, my people, do you want it? How much will you pay for it? I will see you people at the next video. Possibly, I think this may be the conclusion. This is part four. Part five will be coming the next time, guys. You will see me on this platform. I'm stopping here. It's late. It's getting in the evening. The sun is going down. And we have had a long journey so far. Let me get over to the other side and say bye to you, my people, because I'm going to see you all. I'm going to see you at the next video. I'm going to see you at the next video. Destiny is here. She's going away to get more information to bring you away. I will see you at the next video. I will see you at the next video. People, namaste. I'll see you at the next video. Part five coming up. Make sure you watch part one, part two. Part three and part four will be going up sometime later tonight and
part five tomorrow. Hopefully, I will conclude this powerful testimony, my experiences, and my story to my higher, greatest self. Namaste. Good night, my people.